I'm sure at one point or another you've been told that you must shoot in manual mode and that it's the only way to really take full use of your camera. And basically, if you're not shooting in manual mode, you're not a real photographer. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you that this is absolutely not true. Because a lot of the times when you're shooting in manual mode, you're actually doing something that a priority mode could have easily done for you. So it really pays to learn all about them. Now, before we dive into all the different handy modes that your camera has to offer, let's first make sure we understand the difference between manual mode and manual focus. Because a lot of beginner photographers get confused between these two terms. You know, they sound very similar, but they don't do the same thing. Manual mode is one of the five main shooting modes on your camera. When your camera is set in manual mode, you have to set all three pieces of the exposure triangle, the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. Manual focus, on the other hand, is all about setting the focus or where the sharpness in your image is going to be. Digital cameras have two focus options. The first one is autofocus. The camera will then attempt to focus for you. And if you choose the right settings, it usually does a pretty good job. The other option is manual focus. This means you have to turn the focus ring on the lens to set the sharpness or focus. All right, now that we understand that important difference, let's talk about all the different shooting modes, when is a good time to use them, and what you should look out for. So as I mentioned, most cameras have five different shooting modes. Full automatic mode, usually shown as a green square or box on your dial that says auto. Program mode, usually shown as P on your dial. Aperture priority mode, shown as A or AV on your dial. Shutter priority mode, usually shown as S on your dial or TV on Canon cameras. And lastly, manual mode, shown as M on your dial. Basically, the difference between these modes is how much work your camera is doing for you and how many settings you're adjusting yourself. Now, some cameras do have a few extra modes, but I'm just gonna cover these modes that you'll most likely find on every camera. In full automatic mode, your camera adjusts all the settings for you, and all you have to do is press the shutter button. The camera will decide what is the best setting for ISO, shutter speed, and aperture to make sure you have a well-exposed image. But it also sets things like white balance and focus area. So you have little to no options to choose from, options that you might need to achieve specific artistic results. And even though I don't necessarily recommend using auto mode, I think it can be very useful for complete beginners because having your camera take care of all the settings frees you up to focus on what is most important, and that is capturing the shot. The downside is that your camera might make less fortunate choices when picking the shutter speed, aperture, or ISO. If there's not enough light, for example, your camera might set a shutter speed that is too slow or an ISO that is too high, resulting in lower quality images. So if full auto mode doesn't produce the images that you like, or you can't achieve the artistic effect that you're looking for, you might want to start to take a bit more control and switch to the next shooting mode, program mode. Program mode is the next step up from full automatic. You'll notice that the P for program mode is gray on the camera mode dial, just like all the other semi-automatic modes that we'll still cover in this video, and of course, manual mode. Contrary to full auto mode, program mode lets you control some settings such as ISO, white balance, focus area, and exposure compensation. The camera will set the shutter speed and aperture to get a good exposure, but you can still change these settings by turning the dials. However, the camera will always keep the same exposure, so if you're changing the shutter speed, the camera will change the aperture and vice versa. The program mode is a great learning tool for beginners because you can see how your camera adjusts all the settings whenever you change one. For example, if you set a aperture of f2.8, you can see how your camera is changing all the other settings, and you can then just copy those settings whenever you're practicing in manual mode. But if you need to get the shot fast, for example, when the light is changing or if your subject is moving very quickly and you might miss the shot if you're taking too long with your settings, it's great to be able to switch back to program mode. Another great setting that you have available in program mode is exposure compensation. On some cameras, you'll have a dial like this one with the plus and minus numbers on it. Or on other cameras, it can be accessed via this plus minus button. If you feel like the camera didn't get the exposure quite right, exposure compensation allows you to overwrite the camera's exposure settings and easily make adjustments. If you think the images your camera is shooting are too bright, you can decrease the exposure by turning the dial down. Or if the camera is making your images too dark, you can turn the dial up, adding a bit of exposure. There are, however, a few downsides to the program mode. For example, when you want to change one setting 
or you want to change the exposure with the exposure compensation, your camera will always change both the aperture and the shutter speed. And you might not want that because you may be at your minimum shutter speed when shooting handheld and you don't want the shutter speed to go any lower. But in program mode, your camera won't allow you to do this. That's where the two next camera modes come in very handy. Aperture priority mode will allow you to set your aperture and the camera will adjust the shutter speed, making sure you have a correct exposure. The aperture determines how blurred or sharp the background in your image will look. This is also referred to as depth of field. A large aperture such as f1.4 for example will make your background look very blurry or out of focus. A small aperture such as f16 will capture more details in your background. Besides that the aperture also determines how much light is reaching your camera sensor. That large f1.4 aperture will let a lot of light in your camera whereas that small f16 aperture will reduce the amount of light entering your camera. In aperture priority mode you can also adjust your ISO but you can also decide to set your ISO to auto. Then your camera chooses the best combination of shutter speed and ISO to accompany your selected aperture in order to get a correct exposure. Aperture priority is great to use when you want to have a fixed depth of field. This means that your photos will have a more consistent look which can be very important in certain situations. Let's say you're a portrait or a wedding photographer and you regularly shoot at a large aperture of f2.8. When the light is inconsistent you would constantly have to change your settings which can get very annoying and even result in bad exposures. Instead of doing that you can switch to aperture priority mode, select your f2.8 aperture and not have to worry about anything else. Your camera will make sure that your shutter speed and ISO are properly adjusted. When you're a beginner photographer aperture priority is a good way to figure out how aperture works and introduce you to all the different apertures and how they affect your final image. Similarly to aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode is another semi-automatic camera mode that gives you control over your camera's shutter speed. Your camera then sets the aperture that complements your shutter speed to make sure that your image is well exposed. Shutter speed is the setting that determines how fast the shutter of your camera opens and closes. This determines how much light enters your camera and hits the sensor. At a fast shutter speed, not much light will reach your sensor. When the shutter stays open longer, at a slow shutter speed, more light will reach the sensor. In shutter priority mode, you can also set an ISO value, but you can also decide to set your ISO to auto. Then your camera chooses the best combination of aperture and ISO to complement your selected shutter speed in order to get a good exposure. Shutter priority mode is great to use when your shutter speed is the most important setting for capturing the image that you have in mind. And the most obvious example is when photographing things in motion. A slow shutter speed will blur any motion in your image and this is great to create a sense of movement. A fast shutter speed on the other hand freezes that motion. This is something that you'll see more more often in wildlife photography or sports photography. The faster the motion, the faster the shutter speed needs to be to freeze that motion. Another example where it's important to have control over your shutter speed is when you're photographing handheld. When your shutter speed is too slow, your images might end up blurry if you're not using a tripod. A rule of thumb when shooting handheld is to have your shutter speed set to the double your lens's focal length. So if you're photographing with a 50 millimeter lens, shoot at a minimum shutter speed of 1 over 100. It's good to know that both in aperture priority and in shutter priority, changing your settings will not change the exposure. This is a semi-automatic mode, so your camera always controls the exposure and will just adjust the settings to keep that same exposure. But if you do want a brighter or darker image, you can use the exposure compensation dial. So turning the dial up will add exposure and turning the dial down will decrease the exposure. One other crucial thing to be aware of is that using one of these two modes can still result in a bad exposure. Here are two examples that could cause a badly exposed image. If you're shooting in very bright conditions like on a sunny day and you choose a very slow shutter speed while in shutter priority, your image can be overexposed. For example, if your shutter speed is set to one tenth of a second, it will be letting in too much light and the camera can't lower the ISO below 100 and it also can't set a smaller aperture than f22. The image will then be overexposed or too bright. The opposite would also be true. If you're shooting in a very dark situation and you choose a very fast shutter speed, the camera will set the maximum ISO and the largest aperture, but it cannot compensate in any other way to create a brighter image. The image will then be underexposed or too dark.
The same would also be true with certain aperture settings. It would, however, be less likely to happen. Okay, so maybe now you might be asking yourself, well, when should I use manual mode then? And the short answer to that is use manual mode whenever you feel comfortable taking control over all your settings or when you have the time to play around with all those settings. Shooting in manual mode is without doubt a very important skill to learn in photography. You can, for example, under or overexpose your photos for certain creative effects and take full control over how your final final image turns out. Besides that, if you're interested in doing things like night photography, long exposure photography, exposure bracketing, you're going to have to learn how to use your camera in manual mode. To sum this all up, the bottom line is that you do not always need to shoot in manual mode. You just have to find what works best for you and for the photography situation that you're in. And this could be program mode or manual mode. It doesn't really matter. There are more important things to think about when you're photographing besides your exposure settings. Think about composition, focus, lighting, or maybe things that might be distracting in your frame. So I believe that your photography will improve more when you're not having to think about exposure settings on top of all these other things. Now there are some very typical photography mistakes that I see a lot of beginner photographers make. So make sure you watch this video next where I show you a few tips on how to avoid these so they're not stopping you from taking beautiful, well-exposed and sharp images.